recently I stumbled across a video on the internet was a panel discussing whether the devil is real or not. <laughs> got my attention was when Deepak said this. And uh, it just occurred to me, 3.14, 3.14 is the approximation of uh, the first approximation of pi, which refers to infinity. So uh, as long as your quantum physics explanations help me understand infinity, I would be honored. I understand where Deepak is coming from. Because until very recently, I used to think exactly the same thing as he does. And I applied the idea of infinity not only to pi, but even to other numbers that didn't have an end, that keep going, uh, going continuously. A repeating number that result of a division, let's say 10 divided by 3, that it just ends on a repeating number. But that is, and, and that is not wrong to say that that is a representation of the infinity. It is a representation of the infinite, on the same way that the word infinite is a representation of the infinite. Now, that confusion happens when you actually believe that mathematics is the language of nature. Mathematics is the language of science. Is if you can even call it a language, I, I think it is, but the point is, mathematics is the system, is, is the method that we use to explain nature. But it doesn't mean that nature itself operates in mathematics. I mean, you can say that nature is a language. But it's kind of silly to say that nature has a language. To summarize, I would use the words of Jeans, which says that, who said that uh, the great architect seems to be a mathematician. Now, let's try to understand what is a language and how mathematics can be called a language by making an analogy with another language, English. The current English alphabet has 26 letters, A to Z. There are other languages that have other alphabets that have different letters. The Russian alphabet is different. The uh, Croatian alphabet is different. The Greek alphabet is different and so on. Other languages such as Chinese or Japanese doesn't even use an alphabet, use a different method. An alphabet is a representation in symbols of phonemes. So each symbol represents a sound that we use in spoken language. And with, with all of those sounds, with all of those phonemes, we can form words, all words that exist in the English language. Now, in the case of mathematics, it's very similar. We use Arabic numerals to express numbers, to express value that we use in mathematics. We use 0 to 9 as our, as our numerals, each one representing a different value. But in essence, and that's the beauty of mathematics, and that's why mathematics has become the, the language of science all over the world, because mathematics is so simple. In essence, mathematics only needs two values. We call it 0 and 1. Uh, we can call it nothing and something, you can call it in many different ways, but the point is it has, it needs to have two values. And the basic rule of mathematics is that one number or one representation or one unit cannot be each value at the same time. But with only two values, with only two symbols, let's call it, you can do any mathematical operation. And you can observe that when you look at computers, they're operating a binary system. We use one and zero, but we could have used circle and square. And you have the same thing. Computers will be able to do exactly the same thing if instead of one and zero, we use A and B. It doesn't matter, as long as you have two different symbols. And with that simplicity, mathematics can explain in a very clear way things that other languages can't. 
For example, English is a great language to explain complex things. Like with English, you can explain things through analogy very effectively. If I want to describe someone that I'm holding this mug, I give a description of the mug, I can tell the shape, I can tell that the mug has a cylindrical shape, that the mug is closed on the bottom, that it's open on the bottom, that it has sort of an arch where I can hold the cup, has an arch, sort of an arch on the side where I can hold it. I can call, I can say that there is a picture of a Winnie the Pooh on it. And you can understand as long as you know what a cylinder is, as long as you know what an arch is, and as long as you know what a Winnie the Pooh is. If you don't know what any of those things are, you don't even, you don't know what I'm really talking about. One good example of that, and that is a limitation of English, you can't really explain the color red to a person who has never experienced red. A blind person can know shapes because a person can touch things that have a certain shape. They can touch a cube and know what a cube it feels like. But in case of color, they can't. You can give them some, something hot and tell them that is what red is like. But it's not really, because something can be cold and red. Red, we associate with hot, but is, red is not hot. That is just an analogy that we make to, to try to explain red, but it's a false analogy, because that's not what colors are. Colors is simply how our eyes perceive light. Now, with mathematics, you might not be able to make a blind person see, but you can make a blind person know the difference between colors without making any analogy. Because with mathematics, you can explain to the person that light is a wave, and that wave has different frequencies that can be measured through... Um, it's an electromagnetic radiation that can be measured, and each frequency is how we perceive light. Light is uh, colors, sorry, how we perceive colors. Each color is simply a different frequency in the wave that light travels. Each frequency has a different number. And numbers, and a person can touch in Braille, for example, a blind person can touch a piece of paper that says that blue is the term uh, certain frequency, yellow is this different frequency, blue red, all of colors have different frequencies. It's not the same as seeing color, but at least you can easily show to a blind person that color has a difference. The blind person will have a different perspective of color, will associate color not with what they see, but they will associate color with the frequency that they can feel when they read a mathematical book about, about colors, about light. So, in this case, mathematics can explain something that uh, English kind of fails to do. But it's a good example that mathematics is just a method to explain things. It's just a system to explain nature. So going back to pi. Mm, pi. To explain exactly what it means. What I did. I did well. I did what every person should do when I realize, okay, I'm saying that pi is a representation of eternity and that kind of maybe proves the supernatural, I started to think about it and recognize that, you know what, I actually, I'm pretty bad at math, so maybe the reason why I'm saying this shit is because I don't understand it. It's because I am probably stupid when it comes to mathematics. So I did what every person should do. I asked to mathematicians, or people who are good in mathematics, what does it mean? Well, their first attempts to try to explain me kind of fail, because I am stupid in mathematics, and I have to make being peace with myself with that fact that I don't know. It's not their fault that I couldn't understand it. It's my fault. It's because I didn't study mathematics enough. It's not an easy topic for me. For my, I, I struggle with it. I'm not bad in logic. I can understand logic, but I struggle with mathematics. I'm not good in it. So I decided to study. 
I decided to study and understand what is pi. Well, pi is non-repetitive and it is eternal, not because it's a perfect number, it's because it's a bad number. Pi is an irrational number in the classification of mathematics, and it is an irrational number because from, what, from my understanding, and any mathematicians who are watching this can even correct me on this because I might be wrong, but from my understanding, pi is an imperfect number because it establishes a relation between a straight line, the diameter of a circle, and a circumference of a circle, which is a circle. It's a circular, uh, circular shape. So you have two different shapes and you try to establish a relation between them. Since they are different geometric, or, uh, geometric shapes, geometric forms, this relation is not perfect because like the example that I used before relating to color in the English language, you can only do an analogy between these two different forms. That is a limitation of mathematics. That's because mathematics is not perfect because as it's just a system of communication. And in this imperfection, create something like an irrational number. But it is pretty, pretty important. If you can measure the circumference of, of a circular object, I can just do it right now. So for example, I have this lid and a measuring tape. Now I can put the measuring tape around the lid and I can see how, what is the circumference and I get 24 centimeters. That is the circumference of the lid. Now I will measure the diameter of the lid and the diameter of the lid is about 7.60 something, right? 7.60 something is the diameter coming from one side to the other. Well, you know, I'm using the measuring tape. It might be not perfect, but you understand what I'm going with this. Now, if you get the measurement of the diameter of that little lid and you multiply by pi, you're going to get pretty close to the measure that we got from the circumference of the lid. It's not perfect because remember, pi is not a perfect analogy. Perfect is an irrational number. It's not, it doesn't make a perfect analogy between the diameter and the circumference. But it's very good. And if you apply to every circular object, you usually get very close. And the more numbers you use, uh, the more decimal numbers you use on pi, the closer you're going to get. But it's never perfect because that means you know that is a it's caused by the fact that pi is an imperfect number is an irrational number well i just hope my video helped you to understand uh what mathematics is what a little bit of what language is and most importantly what mathematics is not because that misconception of mathematics makes people believe things that are absolutely nonsensical and and i was guilty of that too so my point with this video is trying to make people understand that you cannot people who try to use mathematics to to claim things that are supernatural uh they are that to try to prove a deity they will always fail because they are misrepresenting mathematics they are not they don't understand what mathematics actually is mathematics is just a system that humans use to explain nature mathematics is not nature dna for example doesn't have a language it doesn't have a code these are just words that we use to explain how these things work if someone says that DNA is the code that God put in every cell, this person might not be lying to you, but this person is misrepresenting what DNA is. That's not what DNA is. That's not how nature works. Nature doesn't have a code. It doesn't have a secret code that we must crack. Nature is simply how things work. And science and mathematics is simply how we explain how things work. And that's why they are not perfect. That's they are not the path to truth. They are simply explanations.
the same way that I am using English now to explain my ideas to you. Well, thank you for watching and please don't leave just a like or dislike. Please write a comment, uh, I, either if you like it or dislike the video. If you think I misrepresented science, mathematics or language in any way, I am happy to be corrected if I'm wrong. Uh, I don't know everything. I'm not a linguistic. I am not a mathematician. I can make mistakes. I'm not a scientist either. So please correct me. I will be happy to be corrected. And yeah, thank you for staying until the end and watching the whole video. And hopefully see you next time. Cheers.